River, Massachusetts. A beautiful New England city with a unique landscape and beautiful Victorian style homes. But one home's history is associated with a gruesome killing. August 4th, 1892, Andrew Borden and his second wife, Abby, were found dead in their second street home. Andrew's daughter, Lizzie Borden, suspected, arrested, but then acquitted of all charges in a high-profile case. Lizzie and her sister bought a large, luxurious home on French Street not long after the trial. This house was apparently the home of Lizzie's dreams, and it would eventually be where she died. Some say her spirit is still within these walls. That's why I'm here. I've teamed up with DLH Paranormal Investigation. That house is very active. Is anyone here that would like to speak with us? To try and find out if Lizzie's spirit is still here. The organization you're with? We're DLH Paranormal. So we're kind of unusual um, in the fact that we are an all female group. Deb Vickers' all female investigative team takes its work very seriously. It doesn't scare us away as we're more just interested to find out what it is. We start with a rundown of investigative equipment. This is a REM pod, no. meter. This is the ovalus. Then head to the basement. Lizzie Borden, if you're here, are you happy to be able to once again entertain in your house? Speak into my red light. We're not here to harm you. During an EVP session, I had a few questions myself. How long have you been here? How many people are in this room? Well, I think even though she was acquitted of the murders, a lot of people still believed that she did it. I also used dousing rods to get answers. Lizzie, are you here with us right now? Was there communication with unrested spirits here? Our investigation was inconclusive. But one thing I am sure of is that I'll remember this experience for a lifetime. The third baseman, number 19. From little league sluggers working on their craft, to big leaguers taking home the sport's ultimate prize. You are only as good as your equipment. When you bring a bat to a professional player and put it in his hands, he doesn't care what it looks like, he cares what it feels like. Fall River is the spot known across the nation for one of the top pro bat factories. Meet Lou Ledoux of Axis Bats. What's really important is when a player hits a bat and he hears that crack. He knows that that's a solid piece of wood. And that solid piece of wood comes from number one, where it grows, how it's grown, the climate that it comes from, and the finish that's put into it. But the entire process starts with a good piece of wood. And for Lou, he uses a familiar face to New Englanders, Bill Spaceman Lee. Down set. I swing all the ones that have flaws in it. Down set. Because my league, the umpires don't check. Down set. It competes with Louisville. I love Louisville. I love their business model. I love everything about them. But this is where the wood is. He, he's a pitcher, but he knows more about hitting and wood than a lot of guys I do business with out there every day. From Spaceman's Tree Farm in Vermont to MLB stadiums across the country, Ledoux's Accelerator Bat is one of the hottest bats in pro baseball, used by at least one player on every Major League Baseball team, including the reigning AL MVP, Mookie Betts. But Ledoux's journey in baseball has thrown him plenty of curveballs. We were the exclusive supplier of bats for Nakona. So when your customer goes out of business, you have no business. After years of hard work and a little help from the spaceman, Ledoux is back in the batter's box once again as baseball's top bat makers. It's New England resiliency. We'll be the best bat company in the world. No doubt about it. Reporter from Fall River, I'm Joe Kayata, Sports Team 10. Come take a ride with me to a special spot in southern New England, and you don't even have to get out of your car. How you doing? Hey, how are you? What are you seeing? It's just a, a great atmosphere every summer. You're going to follow the fence right around to left. You can't beat that. Thank you. Have a good night. Make no mistake, summer is here. This is the 66th season for North Smithfield's rustic driving. 
and families drive in from all over to take advantage of the first run movies at secondhand prices. It's $27 a carload, so if you have six, seven people in your car, it's a great deal for families. General Manager Nicole Patty says there's something equally special for her as the summer season draws near. And every March it's gear up time. We start planning this place in February, March, and just upgrading as much as we can and making it the best experience for everyone. The Rustic boasts three screens and double features daily. Shows start at dark, and Nicole says if there's one piece of advice she can give. For a 9 o'clock movie in the middle of the summer, we can sell out by 7 o'clock, 7.30. There's a capacity for 500 vehicles, and if you haven't taken advantage of this theater, then you're missing a true treat. We play six movies every night. Each screen plays a double feature, so there's two movies per screen. So we have one film, and then we have a short 10-minute intermission so you can stretch your legs, um, grab something more to eat for the second movie. Each screen has a designated FM station. Many even opt to get out of their vehicles and listen through a portable radio or a boombox. Um, you can bring long chairs. Um, I've seen couches. Um, <laughs> so who says tailgating is only for sporting events? They come three hours before the movie starts just to hang out, play, grab some snacks in here, and and have a good time. The comforts of an indoor experience in the great outdoors. It's like you're in a normal indoor theater and it's, but you have, you know, the stars above you. So it's, you can't beat that. In North Smithfield, I'm Zach Green.